I've needed to participate as well in knowing that I need to back down. Mm. I need to leave my masculine at the door and that I am not turning anyone on. So high-powered women are often quite confusing. They want everything in life under their control, and yet they want to not have to have control in the bedroom. How do you explain this duality and how do we help them? So what I tell guys the secret is to dealing with really powerful women in the bedroom is that the, the woman wants nothing more than just to surrender to her pleasure with him. But she has to trust that he's a man with a plan. The guy needs a game plan. He needs to think about the whole sexual experience with her being something that he's going to essentially take her on this erotic adventure. So he kind of has to be thinking a little bit ahead while still interacting and playing off of what's happening with her. Before he starts, it's best to hug her and hold her and think about uh, what's going on with her. Feel how she's feeling in that moment because she's hormonally cyclical where he's a little more steady state. So what is she in the mood for today? And then start from the outside in. Instead of like a woman's a bullseye where he's just going straight for the genitals, straight for her breasts, he has to start with her feet, with her hands, with her hair, with her cheeks, and work his way to all the good stuff, if you will, but it's all good stuff. <laughs> and uh, the idea is that he's gonna take over her nervous system. He's actually gonna be in charge of her pleasure. And so if he can get her to completely relax and let him take her up to higher and higher and higher orgasmic pleasure, and then bring her down slowly at the end. If he thinks about that whole arc of a lovemaking date with her, then she knows she's in good hands, he knows what he's doing. She can just relax and let go. And as he feels her getting more and more turned on, he can fuel that fire. She's a fire. She needs to be fed with little pieces of tinder and then throw a couple of big logs on where he's a light switch. He's ready to go. So he has to get in her world and take her up that erotic escalation ladder with more and more sensual experiences. And I think if you tell a guy that, it really helps him understand that he can calm and take over her nervous system no matter how strong and powerful she is. And of course, great sex helps a lot, particularly for men. Okay, not for women also, but for men, ultimately, when a woman actually has a real orgasm, a click goes off in his brain, he goes, I'm alpha. Yeah. See, men, not That's all men are powerful. alphas. That's, it's very powerful. It, you know, the monkey brain, we have this monkey brain, and when a woman climaxes in the monkey kingdom, it's because you are the one. She genetically picks it up. The, the, the genetics are different enough for her to want to have you. And also mm -hmm. your testosterone levels are high enough. And I see men's testosterone levels declining. Half in America, the average 50-year-old man has half the testosterone but it will immediately double if he has a climax with a woman. Yes, mm -hmm. if she has a climax, yeah. he has a climax, no, but if she climaxes, <laughs> right, right. it will suddenly double. And so this is like amazing stuff for women to understand, but not to feel the pressure because it's on both of them to create a mutually fulfilling relationship where he gets to feel successful and she gets to feel he's successful in supporting her and coming back to her female side. I think that as a strong woman, I've needed to participate as well in knowing that I need to back down. Mm. I need to leave my masculine at the door and that I am not turning anyone on by being masculine in my home. That doesn't mean I can't make decisions. That doesn't mean I'm not an equal partner. But it's very clear that when I can be fully grounded in my feminine, I'm going to get my needs met much mm -hmm. more, my emotional and sexual needs met much more. So. I I wanted to go back to something you said earlier, which was this high power woman that, that during the day and then at home and she's not getting any of her needs met. And I think that's one of the things that my uh, clients come up with often. These women, have they're high power during the day, they're, high, they're, they're not getting taken care of at night and they're having a real struggle with, their, with getting their needs met. So I love all the tips that you just said to return to this femininity because they are overloaded on that uh, testosterone and that those five days, that window, that special five days, they didn't, they missed that mark in this marriage 
kind of year after week, Petually. month after <laughs> month, year after year. And the resentment builds up. Yes, and the resentment builds up and they don't know how to break that back down to, to come back to their femininity in that practical mm. way that you just outlined for them. That could really save a lot of relationships. So clearly being a high powered woman in today's society is challenging. There's so many things available to us and this conflict of the Mars and Venus on the inside of us is something we all have to make sense of. If you're struggling in your relationship, whether it's a sexual struggle, an emotional struggle, a physical struggle, get some help. All of these guys here can help you and they're available. Don't do it alone.